Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got several big stories to hit in the science world. We've got new planets discovered, a triple dose of cosmological physics, and we're going to dive deep on a story making headlines here, but much bigger in the Eastern world. We're starting here, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and things are ramping up quickly. Overnight, we jumped from essentially nothing to M-class flares and fast ejection pulses, none aimed at Earth thus far. But our eyes will be on the solar wind here for the arrival of the next corona hole stream, while these sunspots are likely to be the primary solar watch factor for the next several days. We're going to head out next to Barnard's star. Observers, you likely remember discussions on the super flaring that happened on Barnard's star, the second closest system to us in the direction of the galactic center. Today, astronomers are clamoring over it for another reason, four mini-Earth exoplanets. A mini-Earth is exactly what you might imagine, not necessarily like a shrunken version of our blue and green planet, but rocky like Earth and just a tiny bit smaller. Article and visual here linked below. Up next, we're finding that one of the most distant galaxies ever found is way too big and way too chemically complex for that age of the universe. This is supposedly still when stars were forming. This looks like a mature galaxy. Timeline is off somehow. And so are the subatomic physics. Team here claiming that the new observations completely rule out the WIMP window as a dark matter candidate. All serious physicists stopped looking for WIMPs already and have moved on to things like axions or ALPs or different models entirely. You know, for a field of science so intent on finding a particle without an electromagnetic interaction profile, they sure do point to a lot of high energy electromagnetic phenomena and suggest dark matter caused it. Finally, on the cosmological front, the galaxy rotation curve issue might not be as straightforward as they thought. Assumptions give way to observational data over time, and as they begin here to drop the amount of dark matter needed in our galaxy, we recall the various confirmed galaxies out there that seem to have none. Lastly, folks, Nauru. The Pacific island that played in World War II is selling passports and citizenship to anyone willing to come. Why? Sea level rise threatens the entire island of villages perched on the beach, and they want funds to relocate the entire population uphill towards the middle of the island. Fascinating. You know, I went and pulled some footage from World War II from the Australian War Memorial. This is from a series of resupply runs to the island. Interesting infrastructure on the beach and extending into the shallow waters there. You can actually still see those items on satellite images from the 2020s. They're still there, which raises a question. That first one, the backwards looking G thing. Yes, that is definitely what that is over on the satellite. Same big village center to the north as well, and the double pier slash bridge termination or whatever that other thing is, that is still there too. Not exactly a lot of sea level rise in the last 80 years, is there? By the way, you can do this same process at Plymouth Rock, the Statue of Liberty, or several landmarks in Miami. Folks, we are out of the next end of the world book, so the other two, Weatherman's Guide and Earth Disaster Cycle, are discounted at the ObserverRanch.com store. It's also where you access the Observer Bot and book your trip to come see us in person. Next big event is on Saturday. Booking, books, the bot, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.